everybody, and welcome to episode number 19 of the Whitlings Prototype. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be manually connecting path nodes. Let me write the title out there. Cool. So, early on in the project, <clears throat> I was trying to tackle two problems at once, right? I needed to get the cubes to spin and the nodes to realize that they had overlapped, link up, and then get our little dude to follow the path. But I was considering this, and since we're reworking the paths, let's actually just get the pathing working before we go any further. It makes sense. Uh, we don't need to worry about do these paths connect correctly. Now that we have the power and control to set the faces directly on the cubes before we test it, we can set up a level that tests all of the things that we're looking it for. You know, we could just have two or three cubes start testing different types of connections, seeing what our little guy does, and uh, fixing the bugs in a more constrained environment, I guess you could call it. <clears throat> so, the only path that we've set up for our new new node system is the downward half curve, I believe. Oh, what is this? Oh, looks like we got some extra extra faces on here. I want to remove these. So let's get these, let's unset these. There we go. So, only three faces exist in the world. Prime for testing. So, let's see. Let's take a look at our path node. As of right now, the only things I care about in our path node are next and previous. <clears throat> um, they're going to be the directions. Uh, let me open up our drawing program. Good old mischief. So, because I can't think of any better verbiage, um, each node is going to have a start and an end, or maybe a begin and an end. I should pick one of those and stick with it. Um, let's see. Lots of starts. So I'm doing a control shift F, lots of begins. So I'm already <laughs> inner edge to start dot begin. Awesome. So I'm already sort of mixing and matching there. I guess we're just going to assume that start and begin are synonymous. And then, of course, end. You know, nothing too surprising there. <clears throat> I don't think I have any other names for end. But if a cube has a beginning and an ending, then I could theoretically say that if we're going from start to end, that our whittling is moving forward across the cube face. And if we're going end to start, then he is moving backwards through the cube face nodes. And this is how we're going to get previous and next. <clears throat> this means that whenever a whittling steps on a path node, if it's a new face, then we're going to need to check, um, what would we call this? Check the begin, check the start, check the direction of traversal. And 
And then once we know the direction of traversal, then we can decide, are we going to be using forwards or are we going to be using backs? I did a little bit of testing. I wonder how much is still there. Okay, good. So my branch path node, I still have traverse direction. And then we've got a right and a left path node. <clears throat> so I, I, yeah, I think I'm totally going to ignore cross paths. I think that's a bad, dangerous game. A lot of things could go wrong there, but branch paths like so should be fine because a branch has a right and a left and we're good. Once we do a cross, um, our religious people are going to get very confused. Actually, I guess they wouldn't if they're coming in this way. Then this would be right and this would be left. But then who goes straight? Yeah, <clears throat> so let's just ignore that for now. I think we have enough path faces to start making some interesting puzzles. So let's see. If new face, we check the direction of the traversal. And we'll say if branch node. Um, we're going to check the Whitling's direction. And once the direction is set, or once we look at the direction, then we can say, okay, we'll go back to this example here. So if this is begin, and we've got two ends, If our Whitling's walking this way, I know that the branch node branches <clears throat> in a forward direction. And so once he gets here, if the Whitling's moving forward, then we can make the choice based on the Whitling's religion. However, if he's moving backwards through this, um, this directed graph, then he's just going to be hitting previous, previous, previous previous, previous. So he has one path through here. <clears throat> Maybe a high level um, Whitling would be able to make this turn. I'm still not really decided if Whitlings have to walk through the center yet. Maybe it would be a rare superpower or some kind of bonus you get with a rare Whitling. Um, so this is possible. But for now, we're going to leave it be. So let's start linking these up and let's get our Whitling walking. So let's see, this is our begin cube, a face, nodes. And I created some paths. So this will be an end path node. And because this is end, that means that the, its next should be the one on this cube. So let's rename this to start node, end node. And ends next is this start. Cool. So this starts next is uh, You know what we should do? We should link this up in the Prefab, right? So starts next is center. 
centers previous is start, centers next is branch. Branches previous is center. Branch direction forward. Hmm, why is all this under old? Let's move that up. Oh, it's under old because of the parent child property drawing order. Interesting. So let's throw another header in there. <clears throat> so it looks like I've actually linked these up. I don't recall if I did this on stream or off. But both of these previous nodes are linked to the branch. Excellent. Let's apply, make sure that's good. Okay, delete. There we go. Let's update the faces so it deletes and recreates. And then let's see how these links stay. The center, branch start. Okay, cool. So these are looking good. We know our left end leaf node. I kind of, oh, I am going from end to start. That is awesome. So cube two, left end is linked to right end. And then right ends previous should be this branch node. Previous center. Cool. <clears throat> so we have a base test case for curves, corner entrances, corner entrances and exits, and also reverse traversal of the face. So this is a really nice setup we've got going here. Most of it is accidental, if I'm being completely honest. So let's see, let's take a look at our Whitling movement. This is going to change uh, dramatically? I don't know. I don't believe that this traverse direction should be inside of branch path node. I'm going to rename this to face, uh, face traverse direction. And then our whittling should have, let's serialize it for now, face transverse direction. I think I'm just going to call it this. We'll type out the whole thing. That's fine. I'm not too worried about that. <clears throat> so let's see. On trigger overlapped, if it's the goal. Okay, if walking is false. So this is the first node overlapped. We say walking is true. We calculate the direction from the whittling to the target node. We normalize that, that's correct. Let's see what this start pathing new face does. Here's our path node start. So this path increment index is out completely. Target node, okay. So we need to set the target node, but everything else.
target node should actually be start. Oh. Okay, so this is starting a new face. That means we're going to need to check the direction. Check order of nodes on new face. Uh-oh. Ah. We just need to look at the tag, don't we? Yes. And it could be start node, it could be begin node. Who knows? Ooh. Hey, this is not tagged. Neither of these are tagged. Start path node. Oops. And then this is end path node. And let's do an else here, debug log. Uh, Whitling entered a new face that has unmarked, untagged, path nodes. Okay. Let's make sure to tag our end nodes and apply the changes. Ooh, and you know what? We're going to have to update faces for both of these. Um, let's go back in here to do make a button that will update all cubes in the scene. And our straight diagonal path has been added. Things are good. Show designer fit set faces outside of play mode. We got that going. Make sure paths reach the end. That is going to be a doozy, everybody. <clears throat> One of my coworkers is very skilled at working on artificial intelligence and problem solving of this kind. And when I approached him about the problem of solving these puzzles, or at least making sure they were solvable, we had a pretty good discussion about it. I'm going to need to do a lot of, oh, a lot of paying attention, or not a lot of optimization, a lot of problem space culling, essentially, where I want to find all the things that don't work and throw them out before we get down to the really heavy duty um, graph traversals and trying to make sure that if cube A, B, and C are spun in certain ways, the player can get to the end. Okay. So, if it's a start path node, face traverse direction equals forward. Backward. And you know, I guess we could just do it in here. I could say target node equals start dot get next. And in here, I could say target node equals start dot get previous. Yeah, we'll type it out. Sure, why not? We can get rid of this. I'm not even sure we really need the owning face anymore.
Yeah. Nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Naturally, now that I delete it, that is going to trigger something in the universe, and all the pieces of the puzzle will move together. So that it means eventually I do need it again. I find that's generally what happens when you start deleting things. Okay, let's define our get next and path node. All right, this is all unreachable code. That's fine. Okay, get next, get previous. Pretty straightforward. So this is our first node. Ooh, you know what we could do? That seems a little bit prettier. Path traversal direction. Face traverse direction. Hmm, next. We've already used the name next. Maybe we could come up with a better name. Get <clears throat> following. Something that comes after well, let's just try it this way for now. There's a ternary operator here, turn next, previous. This way we can just call get next and pass it the direction and our whittling won't really have to have all of these conditions strewn about all over inside. Oh dear. So if we overlap the target node, Hmm, interesting. So here we're going to have to say overlapped dot compare tag end path node and face traversal direction dot forward. So if this, both of these are true, we know we hit the end of a forward. Or the same thing. If we hit the start path node and the face traverse direction, is backward. Then it's time to go to the next face. We start pathing a new face and we're good. Otherwise, our target node is overlapped. Get next. Then we'll pass it the face traverse direction. Calculate our target forward. That looks good. Oh! Ah! And we need to do get next face traverse direction here, too. Cool. 
Is it time to test? Okay, we're well on our way. Hmm. It says get next returned null. That is bizarre. Start. Oh. What's going on there? That's really weird. Dead end. Okay. <clears throat> but remember, we only have like two faces in here, so debugging this is going to be really easy. Looks like we have a special guest coming. As always. Okay. So let's see. I'm thinking Thunderbutt, so we can stay for a little bit. Get your camera time. Let's see. So we died. Dead end. Start equals null. That means that this end node didn't have a next. Oh, that's right. So when I hit update faces, that broke. That broke everything. Not a good sign. Oh my! Begin, end, next, end path node. So let's put a breakpoint in here. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Hey, I did not know that was there. Boop. Okay, moving to next face. Overlapped is an end path node, which means our traverse direction is forward. That's correct. Oh, get linked path node. We just want to pass overlapped here, I think. Wait a minute. We want to pass overlapped get next. Oh, and there we go. Let's give that a shot of Rooney. Oh, yeah. You got the turn? You got the turn. Ooh. Oh my. So we, I don't think we actually handled branching paths yet. <clears throat> I don't think we did. I think I could just use the keyword is branch path node. Let's just print that out. That's right, because the next of this branch node is null. Whittling entered a new face that has untagged path nodes. That makes fine at start. Branch. Cool. We got the branch. Hmm. 
And then we use the as keyword to cast as a branched path node. And so we need to see. Ooh. I bet we could just say. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. This chunk of code is the same. Well, the calculating the direction is the same. Target forward, this means we're inside of a path node. I feel like we should do target forward every time, just to be safe. So how about this? Let's... Let's move this down. Oh, ooh, not that far down. I don't know if we want to always set is turning to true. We'll see how that goes. I think that would just set it to true and then our, our rotate code would realize that the paths are aligned and it would just turn it off immediately. But I have this idea that we can make get next a virtual function. Path node public virtual. And that means in our branch path node and our accessors and mutators, we can do a public override. And this is not what we want to do here. Uh, thank you for visiting, Thunderbutt. <clears throat> so let's see. I want to say if branch direction equals direction. Ooh, we're going to need to check. The Whitlings religion, religious leanings here. So for now, we're just going to pretend that they're all Direkian, right? Zoolander can't turn right. So we'll do a special check here. If the branch is a direction, we'll decide whether to turn left or right. Otherwise, we'll just go upstairs and call the parent function. That was a lot of changes in a lot of different places. Boom, turn looks good. Gonna turn again? Yes. Cool. We're getting there. And because we remade both of these, I do believe that that link was kilt. Yes, next on cube one should be cube two. Ah, you know what? This has an up and a... Oh no, we want the up. Ooh. <laughs> right down, unset that. So I'm going to update these faces and then I'm going to link them. So this is left leaf end node. And we're connecting this to the right end leaf node. Oh, yeah, buddy. That 
This is what I'm talking about. That was beautiful. Uh, okay, 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 yeah. So, what's next? Ooh. What about, oh, no. Oh, geez. I've been using all these different softwares recently, and none of them have unified camera controls. That's kind of getting to me. Let's add our, this would be our left face. And we've only done half curve down. I'll rotate that 90 this way. And so I actually want left face. Let's make sure it's the right. Yep, left face, right end leaf node will be linked to up face, left end leaf node. I might have to watch this through our scene. Got camera work to do in the future, that's for darn sure. Oh! <laughs> you know what? Let's do it. Let's just get our... Let's get our Whitling looking the right way completely. So here we're just calculating the forward. That is not quite what we want. And this is a vector three rotate towards Let's go to the drawing board. I think what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take the face and we're going to want to look at the normal. So this is the normal of the new face. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our whittling position and the location of the next node. And we're going to draw a line to that. And we'll call this whittling to node. And we should normalize this as well, just to be safe. <clears throat> This will already be normalized. We can just get the face's current up direction. But this will have to normalize manually through code. So if we have n and wtn, then we can calculate the angle or the vector that is perpendicular to both of them. And we'll call this P. So P is equal to N cross WTN, Whitling to node. And with these three vectors, that means we can create a quaternion. But ooh. what do we have inside of Quaternion land? So 
So Euler angles, this just gives us a three, a vector three representation. Set axis angle. That's not what we want, W, X, Y, Z. I'm not good enough at quaternions to mess with W. Set from to rotation. Set look rotation. Hey, please stop. Thank you. Hey, Thunderbutt, stop it. Hmm. <laughs> so we need a way. I mean, we have the new forward. Let's check out, let's check out the webs. Let's see, Unity build quaternion with three axes, or three vectors. Representing the rotation from one vector to another, that's not quite what we want. A turning in from two vectors, we already kind of know. Well, we do know the two vectors. So is U and V. We are dotting U normalized and V normalized. Interesting. So it looks like we build it the standard way. We cross U and V, and then we just create a quaternion from this real part and the W, X, Y, Z. If you know you are exclusively dealing with unit vectors, you can replace all occurrences of this with the value of 1 in order to avoid a useless square root. That is nice. All of our vectors will be unit vectors. Oof. This formatting is terrible. What are we doing on time? Oh my! Oof. Okay. Maybe we can get this working. That would be very exciting. <clears throat> so, like we did before, let's just snap it. Once we got the snap, then we can slurp. Or lerp. I like slurps with quaternions. They seem to be a little bit kinder. So, as soon as we overlap a target node, always... So this is our target forward. Target node dot get owning face dot transform dot up. So this is the local up of the cube. You know what? Direction is already normalized, so I'm going to use... Oh my. Vector 3W. Terrible name. I hate that. <laughs> um, we want to do a vector 3 cross direction and cube up. 
So we know both of these are normalized. Let's double check what we have to do to get this real part. We dot our two vectors together. Another name for dot is inner product, <laughs> as I type dinner. That's funny. I'm assuming it goes in the same order, x, y, z, w. Now we don't need this is turning. Ooh, let's see how that goes. Wrong. Oh, buddy. <laughs> um, one thing about cross product is that it is not commutative. I think I talked about this in very early days. Still the same. I thought this was a little bit strange. Let's try this out. <laughs> Where are you at, buddy? Totally upside down. That's cool, though. That's cool. That's cool. Ooh, let's rename this to face up. Not looking promising. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's my plan. So let's end the stream here for today. And what I'm going to do off stream is I'm going to wrestle with this quaternion. So you guys don't have to, steer, uh, you know, watch me painfully misunderstand math for two hours. <laughs> but uh, once I do figure it out, then I will um, maybe either tonight, depending on my luck and determination, or at the very latest tomorrow, we should have a working Whitling movement where he can... And I'm just going to figure out how to do the snap once we... Once I get the snap, then I'll, I'll stream how to do the transition bit. So I think that's it for me today. My name is Billy Graben. I hope you all learned a lot, and I will see you next time for episode number 20.